We're at the seaside today in Song Kla, and the first stop is Tanguan Hill to visit and feed the monkeys. So we're just buying some monkey food here. We've got bananas, corn, nuts. And once the monkeys know that we've got some food, I'm sure they'll all come down to get it. These things can be quite scary. They're wild animals and they've got big teeth. If they're hungry and there's food around, they can also get quite aggressive. This one's got a, a baby hanging onto its stomach. You've got to be very careful of these monkeys. We were at a temple in Grubby last year and my wife was walking into like the main sort of temple hall to make merit and a monkey swooped down and stole a bottle of hand cleanser out of a bag. And the thing knew exactly where it was and what to do. And the hand cleanser wasn't a big loss, but if it had been a mobile phone, that would have been a big problem. There's a funicular railway that goes to the top of Tunguan Hill, but unfortunately, like most things at the moment, it's closed because of COVID. And that's a real shame because once you get to the top, you get some great views of the sea and the local area. If you can't get to the top of Tunguan Hill, this is an alternative viewpoint, but you have to drive up to this one. And once again, there are quite a few monkeys up here. And last time I was here, it was quite scary because the, the monkeys at the bottom they're being given food all the time by visitors, but the monkeys at the top don't get that food, so they're quite hungry and they can get quite aggressive. So this is a little view of the Gulf of Thailand and Song Kla, Samila Beach. This sign's got an English translation, but it says, Not Hai Ahan Ling, Boriwei Ni, don't feed monkeys in this area. Probably if they get used to people feeding them, whenever they see new people, they expect food and they can get really aggressive. And in the distance, you can see uh, Tunguan Hill. So that green thing going up the side of the hill is the cover for the funicular railway. And at the top is a temple. And as I say, it's closed at the moment, but if you can get up there, you get some really great views of Song Kla. This thing went up a few years ago. It's some kind of mythical creature. I'm not quite sure what it's called. It's Payanak or something, and it's in three sections. So this is the middle section, and elsewhere in Song Kla, you'll find the head and the tail. We might see those later. I'm not quite sure where we're going yet. This is another Song Kla attraction that's closed at the moment. I'm not sure if it's closed temporarily just for COVID or whether it's closed permanently. It's um, probably the most underwhelming aquarium I've ever visited. There's, there's really not much to it at all. So maybe it has closed permanently. So a quick look inside. Well, as far as, far as we can see inside. Yeah, it looks quite um, derelict, so maybe it has closed. And there used to be a, a go-kart racing track at the back as well, quad bikes. I'm not sure if they're still there. If they weren't a success, they would have closed permanently. This area has been closed off where they're doing some construction work, but you should be able to see the head of that mythical creature that we just saw the middle part of. We're near the beach now, and just along here, there's a strip of seafood restaurants. And no doubt local Thais will all have their favorite but I've been to a few and I think they're all pretty much the same. And as you walk past, there's staff outside trying to get you into their restaurant. Hello, so I crab, my crab, gin su jin da. Very quiet today, even on a Sunday, I was expecting a few more tyres around today, but very few people. And uh, a lot of the Owners of these restaurants are Muslim. You see all the um, Arabic writing. So along with Yala, Pasni and Naratiwat, 
uh, Satoun and Songkla also have big Muslim populations. <laughs> She's trying to speak to me, but she doesn't know much English. Whenever they see a farang, the assumption is that the farang doesn't know any Thai at all. So their 10 words of English is better than the uh, farang's zero words of Thai. In a few recent videos, I've looked at um, some tourist areas, which are very quiet, and you'd expect that because there's so few tourists. But this area, you get a lot, lot of locals coming out to eat seafood. So I was expecting this area to be a bit busier, but it's uh, very quiet as well. Closed shop. Keep deaf off the roads, drive on the uh, sidewalks. Here's my wife's chosen restaurant. There's a section of food outside. Some crabs, shells, we've got oysters, squid, shrimp, and fish. These places are pretty big as well. Whenever I've been before, they've all, always been very full, but not today. This is lunchtime on a Sunday and um, still very, very quiet. And in a minute we'll see the, the beach and the sea. <laughs> Deserted. The seats inside and also seats closer to the, the beach. You also get a few monkeys here as well in the trees. Monkeys everywhere. Okay, I just spotted my my group. Pom sang ahan samrap p. Pop. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Over right onto the beach. And Hat Yai and Song Kla are very closely connected, but they are extremely different. Hat Yai is all about retail, commerce. Um, there's a lot of medical facilities, hospital and clinics and education. And it's not a particularly attractive town, but it's got everything that you need to live. And Song Kla is uh, actually very pretty. It's extremely well maintained. There are a lot of government buildings there's this uh, Sala Glang where I used to go to get my work permit sorted out and that's where Thais get their passports done. And there's also quite a bit of education here as well. There's some big universities and some big schools. But in, in character, the, the two places are completely different. And out here we have Cat and Mouse Islands. Got Mao and Got Mu. Quite nice sand. The sea looks a bit grey today. Sometimes it, it can look blue, other times it looks a bit murky. I know some people that came to Thailand about a year or two after I did, and at first they stayed in Song Kla. And they stayed there for about a year, but they got bored because, you know, it's very pretty, but once you've seen everything once, there's not much to do. So then they moved to Hat Yai because there's so much to do. And also when you're choosing somewhere to live in Thailand, all the places that I find really attractive aren't really conducive to living because they don't have the things that you, you need. You know, if you've got kids, you need schools and, and hospitals, and, and of course you need shops. And um, up until they built the Tesco Lotus here, there were no sort of big supermarkets in Song Kla. Uh, Songkla residents had to go to Hat Yai for everything. Uh, immigration is in Hat Yai, so Hat Yai is just a lot more convenient for living, even though it's um, not particularly beautiful. The food started to arrive, and when you eat Thai style, you don't order your own food. You just order a selection of dishes. That's normally done by my wife, and then everyone just taps in. 
And if you've got a Thai wife, you don't even need to tuck in because she will um, put food on my plate, which is quite nice. And we've just heard a report that in Hat Yai there's torrential rain, but in Songkla, just a few kilometers away, the weather is still very nice. Thai food has a very characteristic smell. And it's amazing how smells can bring back memories. Whenever I smell this particular smell, I'm instantly cast back to vacations that I had in Thailand over 30 years ago. I was hoping to take a bit more of a look around Song Kla and the kids wanted to play in the sea, but the bad weather that was in Hat Yai has now followed us to Song Kla and because of the rain, it looks as if we're going home. Anyway, I hope that gave you a little taste of Song Kla. And as usual, thanks for watching, and there'll be more videos soon. I picked my car up yesterday after almost three weeks in the service center having an oil leak fixed. They stripped the engine down completely, so I was a bit concerned, but on the way to Song Kla, I was actually really impressed at how well the car was driving. However, that wasn't the case coming home. I turned the wipers on because it was raining, and the wipers were very, very slow, which made me a bit suspicious. Then I looked at the voltmeter, which was reading 8 volts instead of the normal 14 volts. And then there were other electrical problems, and then the car became completely undrivable. I think it's quite a small problem, just a connection on the alternator, but now the car's back in the shop waiting for yet another repair. My wife's friend got everyone home, and my wife's brother organised a breakdown truck. But what with the bad weather and the car breakdown, it wasn't the best way to end our day in Sankar. Anyway, see you again soon.